everybody and welcome to Uprising 144K. I'm Hydrogen Man. So I'm doing some hydrogen inhalation right now and people have been asking about like what are the proper levels, you know, is the amount of hydrogen coming out of the unit, for example, that I'm using because people are asking a lot about this because it's my favorite unit and I typically speak about this one. They're asking, you know, are, is the hydrogen that it's putting out enough? Here's a difficult part, guys. As far as science is concerned at this time, there's no set number that lets you know this is therapeutic grade hydrogen. So that's the first thing. However, there is some information and I'm gonna go ahead and share it with you guys and also in regards to machines and different equipment because it's really, really tricky. In fact, let me just start off by talking about, for example, about the percentage of hydrogen gas. When hydrogen gas is at 4% or greater, it's flammable. I've seen equipment that claims 4% and you try to light it on fire and it doesn't. Now, I don't suggest trying to light things on fire. I'm just saying that it wasn't what the company was telling you that it was as far as a percentage of hydrogen gas. The same thing is the same thing I've noticed also with the amounts of hydrogen that a lot of equipment is saying that they're putting out. Because a lot of machines out there, a lot of companies don't actually measure the hydrogen gas flow. It's rather tricky and difficult to do. And a lot of companies just don't do it. And so ultimately, they calculate it. They make a calculation, and overall, it's kind of a guesstimate. And a lot of the guesstimates, for example, are what comes out directly out of the machine. But the Japanese actually discovered something very interesting. It's actually the number one hydrogen company in the world that makes a device, actually, that I'm using. They went super far. This is why I love what, they, what these guys do, because they're so geeking out about hydrogen like me. And what they ultimately did is, yes, they had their calculation also of how much the machine should put out. However, when they actually measured the device, they realized their calculations were off by quite a bit. And this is what they learned. So let me just show you. So right here at the end of this tubing, this is connected to the equipment over here. It's not very long. When they measured the hydrogen gas from the machine, it's actually quite a high number. But when you measure from here, it's 120 milliliters per minute of hydrogen gas. When you hook it up to here, this little distance, by the time it gets to my nose, it's 26 milliliters of hydrogen gas, which maybe doesn't seem like a lot to people, but here's the thing, guys. What they ultimately realized in Japan is that they were losing a lot. I mean, think about it. From here to here, I'm going from 120 to 26 milliliters of hydrogen. They realized they were losing a lot of hydrogen through the tubing, which is why it's made of a specific material it's much different than a normal cannula. And even the length, it's not very long. That's why when I see equipment there with like super long tubing, for me, it's an immediate red flag because I'm like, they must not know that they're losing that much of the gas through the tubing, which is something that's really important to know. And almost nobody has noticed this except the Japanese because they actually measured the hydrogen gas flow. So that's the first part. Now, the second part is 26 milliliters of hydrogen. So here, ultimately, this is the information that is currently known. We know that our body, at its peak health, when you're really, really young, when everything's going perfectly, you're making about a thousand milliliters of hydrogen per day, okay? So ultimately, what they've, I guess, theorized is you wanna bring up your levels to that nice thousand number. Because one of the things that happens with hydrogen is as you age, you make less and less. It's very normal for somebody who's older to be making about 400 milliliters of hydrogen. So they want to bring it up to that, now, that nice thousand level so that that way your body's functioning, basically running on all cylinders and functioning properly. And that's kind of the theory. And I would almost guess that it is probably a better idea to not do huge amounts of hydrogen because too much hydrogen, and I mean, there is actually some interesting research that shows that if you just do it all the time and have really crazy levels, the benefits can stop. I actually think it's better to just try to keep it at a nice, natural level. A lot like glutathione too. Glutathione works great when you're at the proper levels, but if you go too much glutathione, it's actually bad for you. If you have too little, it's also bad for you. So I think it's all about balance. And so knowing that number about hydrogen, I think is really important to knowing how much you should get. So that's why, like one of the things that I recommend is a 30 minute session. Now again, based on the equipment that I'm using. So if you think about 26 milliliters of hydrogen per minute that you're getting right here under your nose, in a 30 minute session, that's about, I don't know, let me calculate here, uh, 780, I think, milliliters of hydrogen. So 780 milliliters of hydrogen with whatever your body is making is probably gonna bring you roughly to that nice thousand number without going crazy overboard. So actually, it's a very, very good number that I think is a safe number. I would not focus so much on the percentage of hydrogen gas, but I would focus more on like the milliliters that you're getting, just for those people out there who've been asking about it and there's a little confusion. And again, this is pure hydrogen gas, not mixed with oxygen. 
And ultimately, guys, I hope that kind of answers your questions because that seems to be the big question. And so this is a good amount of hydrogen. You could also do it, if you do it a little longer, it's totally fine. It's totally safe to inhale hydrogen. You know, I haven't seen any negative side effects. I haven't seen anything in the research that shows it, but it really depends, I think, on your age, what exactly you're going through, because hydrogen also inhalations that affect the body differently. It's gonna, what I've noticed is it primarily affects like the sinuses, the eyes, the brain, the lungs, the heart, and the spinal fluid. So those are the kind of the areas that, that the inhalation hits. But also, really important, I've talked about it before, hydrogen water is really where it's at. Hydrogen inhalation is just a nice pairing and works really, really great with it. And make sure to be properly hydrated when you're doing your inhalation if you really want it to be more effective. And ultimately, I think that really is it, guys. I hope that kind of answers people's questions about the amounts of hydrogen as compared to a lot of other equipment, again, with these really, really crazy numbers. I really don't think that a lot of those numbers are actually accurate. Again, these companies don't test them. So I really think that it, it, it can be a little misleading because then you see a number like the one that, that the device that I'm putting out, but it's a more realistic number. I think it's a lot like cars for those of you who are car people, you know, like how much horsepower is it putting out, you know, to the ground or at the crank, you know, you can have different numbers. I've seen cars that have lower horsepower ratings, a lot of German cars specifically like Porsches, but yet they're faster than cars that have higher horsepower ratings. The whole thing gets a little confusing, but when it comes to hydrogen, it's even more confusing. So hopefully you guys found this helpful. If you did, as usual, give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. And also share the video if you think people out there will find it interesting. And that's it guys. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time on the next one.